Today we're talking about cropping your images. Should you do it? And if you do, exactly where should you crop them? We're gonna talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. Ask your questions right there on the site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Also, if you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon so you get notifications as soon as new photo shows come out all week long from myself and the other photo hosts here on Adorama TV. Also, if you're interested in taking a photo workshop from me, uh, we're doing them online now as often as I can, and hopefully in the future, we'll be back out in the field doing them live at concerts and other places around the United States. So make sure you sign up at shootfromthepit.com. You can join my email list there. You'll be the first to know as soon as new workshops are available. All right, let's get right to today's show. We got a question from Laura W., and she wants to know, can you talk about cropping? I'm never sure if I should crop my pictures, and then if I do, I can't figure out how much to crop them. Are there any rules, or is it different from picture to picture? Thanks. All right, so when we refer to cropping, you probably know what we're talking about is actually cutting into the edges of a photo that's already been shot. What that actually does is it changes the field of view of your picture after the fact. But yes, Laura, there are actually some do's and don'ts, some things you should look out for when cropping your images to make them more impactful. What cropping is, is it's really a compositional tool. There are some photographers, we'll call them purists, who don't like to crop at all. They just use their pictures straight out of camera and never crop them. That is totally fine. Art, of course, is subjective, and photography can be a wonderful creative expression that you can do however you want to do. I personally always try my best to get the composition exactly how I want it in camera when I'm on the shoot. I'm gonna look at all four sides of the image and will position myself and my subject if possible to get the strongest image I can. But it really also depends on what type of photography that you do. You've got a lot of leeway and time to get the perfect composition when you're making a portrait of someone, for example, or you're creating a still life image in the studio. But if you're a photojournalist, for example, or you're a sports photographer, the action is moving crazy fast, and it's more important to get everything exposed properly and in focus, since it might be gone literally in the blink of an eye. Then you can worry about composition after the fact, and you can crop your photos to accurately convey the story that you wanna tell. Now, exactly where you wanna crop an image is both science and art. There's not exact rules. I mean, there are some rules that you should try to follow, but it also is a part of the creative process. So it's your responsibility as the photographer to tell your viewers where to look. That's what you're doing. When you create the confines of an image, you're telling them where you want them to look and what's important. Cropping is gonna help you do that in a few different ways. For example, you can zoom into your subject to make them bigger and eliminate dead space around them. You could reframe your image to create a more pleasing composition using, let's say, a compositional tool like the rule of thirds, for example. Or you also might crop to cut out distractions that take away from the photograph. Now, it's actually easier for me to demonstrate this on my images. So we're gonna come here on the computer. I'm in Photoshop and what you're looking at here, this is Luke Combs uh, on stage last year. He is uh, you know, big country superstar Luke Combs. He is shotgunning a beer, which is something he does during his show. It takes him about two and a half seconds. It's quite impressive how fast he does that. Now, this is straight out of camera. This is uncropped. I can pull out a little bit here so you can see exactly what that looks like. And this is uncropped. Now I shoot this a little bit looser than I know my final composition is gonna be. And the reason is, this is like that sports photography where it's happening very, very fast. And he shotguns this thing super quickly, about two and a half seconds, and then he throws that beer can in the audience. And if I'm too tight, I'm gonna cut out his arm or I'm just gonna miss something, right? I, I'm worried about a lot of different things here. And so I'd rather shoot it a little bit looser so I have some space. I don't wanna go too loose, but just loose enough so that I have some space for what's gonna happen next because it's gonna happen very quickly. But then when I go into the computer to work on this image, I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna say, there is all this dead space around that is just useless, right? It doesn't add anything to the photograph. It doesn't need to be there. So I'm gonna bring up my cropping tool and, if, and as you probably know, this tool is the crop tool right here. So I'm gonna pull that up and I'm gonna go ahead and draw where I want my crop. Now I usually just kind of start loose and then it brings up the little crop box. It gives me my rule of thirds if I need it. And then I'm gonna go through all four sides and bring them in as much as I can. This top part can probably go right to about there. The left can go right up to his elbow, I bet. 
The right can go right up to his head, and I think the bottom can come up maybe to that elbow. Now that's a little too square for me, so I'm just gonna pull it out just a little bit to make it a little more horizontal, and then I can drag it around and kind of play with it. And I think that is about the right spot to do it. And when I blow that up, that now is a much more powerful image than the original. If you go back and look at the original, it's just, it's, there's so much dead space there, especially if you're gonna run this on social media where it's gonna be very small, you want the impact to be right there. You want it to hit, as soon as you look at it, I'm telling you exactly what to look at, you know exactly where to look. So that's a pretty simple example because there's just dead space there, it's easy to crop out. Let's look at another frame. This is uh, Michigan at Ohio State. I think this was around 2002. And Ohio State won the, uh, this was the last game of the season. They won the game. They went on to the national championship. They actually went ahead, went ahead and won the national championship against my Miami Hurricanes, but that's all right. I like the picture anyway. So, um, but here's the thing. I've, I don't think I've ever shown this. This is straight out of camera and you can see how I shot it. I was up high in the press box shooting down with a 400 millimeter lens, I believe. And they picked the quarterback up, Craig Krenzel. They picked him up for just a few seconds at the end of the game after the fans stormed the field. And I've got it in the picture. And this is how I framed it when I was shooting. It happened very, very quickly. Now, if you look at it, there's some stuff on the top left corner of the image. There's the, that field there, that green field there that just pulls away, it pulls your eye away, right? When you look at this image, you, 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 you're sort of, you're, dis, you're distracted by that. And also, it doesn't make the field look as crowded as it was, right? It was actually packed with people on all directions, but there were pockets where there, of course, weren't gonna be people. So this is a perfect case to crop. So if we go in here and draw the crop tool, what I'm gonna do is bring this down from the top just to get rid of that green spot there, maybe to about there. I'm gonna bring in the left side, let's say to right about there. And then I can actually slide my composition over here. And this is sort of where your creativity comes into play. I can put Craig Krenzel, the quarterback, right on my rule of thirds. And you can see in the crop tool, it actually brings up the rule of thirds. If you don't know what the rule of thirds is, you divide your image into three sections, left, right, and up, down. You can see how we've got that divided. And if you put your the most, the most important part of the picture on one of those intersections where there's four of them, one, two, three, four, if you put them right there, the composition is just gonna be stronger. It just works, right? So in this case, I'm gonna put Krenzel right on that spot right there. I've cut out the green uh, of the field and I've recomposed the image to do that. Let's hit return. And now that picture is so much stronger than it was before. You don't see any of that green. There's nothing pulling your eye away. It's just a mass of people. And then you're, you're not seeing anything else except that. And also the final composition is really nice with Craig right at that rule of thirds. Now, one more thing. What is the downside of cropping? As you start to crop, if you're doing it in a program like Photoshop, you're actually gonna to start to lose resolution. You're cutting off pixels. I hope you're doing your cropping. I do all my cropping inside of my raw conversion software like Capture One where, or Lightroom or whatever you're using where you can do it non-destructively. You can sort of play with the crop and see how it looks. And then you can decide if it's worth actually cropping in that much to give up that resolution. Um, but generally you don't wanna crop in too much depending on the original resolution of the photograph. Let me show you one more example that's gonna show how this works. Now this is, this is something I've definitely never shown. This is at the end of the Super Bowl in 2010. The New Orleans Saints uh, beat the Colts. Drew Brees was the MVP. This was the year of Hurricane Katrina, so it was a great story for the town of New Orleans. This game was in Miami, my hometown. So it really was a great game for me. And then at the end, Bree's, uh, his wife came up on the podium after they did the trophy ceremony and he picked his kid up. They brought, they had their little baby. I think he was like two years old or something. He picked him up as the confetti was coming down. And this is the picture here. This is how I shot it. The way Sports Illustrated actually covers a game is when they have that many photographers, we have something like 14 or 15 photographers all covering the game. They actually assign us positions because otherwise we'd all be on top of each other. So because we'd all want to be in the spot to get the game-winning touchdown or whatever it is. So in this case, I'm actually in the stands. I'm in the first row of the stands, right behind at the back of the end zone in one of the corners. And that was my assigned spot. So I couldn't move there. So at the end of the game, after it was over and they set up to do the trophy ceremony, it's way at the 50-yard line and facing the other direction. So I was super out of position for it. 
but I knew we had other photographers in, the, in front of it, so I figured I would just stay back there. Now this picture is full frame with a 600 millimeter lens that gives you an idea of how far away I was. It's a 600 F4 and I'm very, very far away, but I just shot it anyway, you never really know, right? And it's a 12 megapixel camera, this was 10 years ago. So that's the frame. Now if I was cropping this, um, I would, I would, if I wanted to make it a horizontal, I might go in something like this just to get rid of all of that distraction, right? Cause that's going to bring your eye into everything else. If I was doing a vertical, maybe I would do it like this with just the three of them, which is really kind of sweet, right? That's how I would do it. When I sent it to Sports Illustrated, they actually wound up cropping it in a surprising way. They cropped it in an awful lot. They cropped it like this. I mean, that is a tiny percent of the image, probably about 20% of the image. And this is from a 12 megapixel camera. Now, why did they do that? Let's go ahead and zoom in. I don't really love the way that crop is. It's kind of, it's too centered. His wife is cut out a little bit, but what they did was they actually wound up making it into the cover. And you can see you're, by leaving that extra space on the left side, they were able to get the text in there. They had the space at the top where they were gonna put the, um, obviously the name of the magazine and all that kind of stuff. So um, they are gonna crop it a little bit differently than I'm gonna crop it purely as a photograph. But that is that is crazy how much of a crop that is from the original. So um, actually I think I can lay that over. So yeah, you can see exactly where the magazine is from that original image. So. Um, you never really know, especially with a client, what they're going to do. I was surprised how much they cropped that in and how much, how well it held up. They've got an amazing imaging department at the magazine. That's what they do 24 seven. So they were able to pull out every piece of uh, quality from the raw file that they could to get that image on the cover. So cropping can be subjective. Uh, I generally try to cut out all the distractions and do what I can to make my image stronger. But also, like I said, I prefer to get my framing exactly how I want it in camera. I don't really want to give up that resolution if I don't have to. Also, if you shoot it differently, if I could have gotten closer on this Super Bowl, the depth of field would have been even better, would have been the background would have been more out of focus, and it just changes everything as you move in closer. I've done videos about how uh, distance actually changes with your focal length and how it changes your depth of field and all of that. So you'd, I'd rather shoot it that way in camera, but having a little bit of space to play with and just to change my composition a little bit is actually can be a good thing um, if you want to do it after the fact. At the end of the day, when you need it, cropping can be a really powerful tool to make your images more impactful. Whether you're just changing the original composition or cutting out distracting elements, I recommend that you spend some time with the crop tool and just see, you know, play with it. See, crop here, crop there, move an inch this way, move an inch that way, and see how it looks. And you're really gonna start to notice a difference as you showcase your images. You wanna showcase them in a way that people hopefully are never gonna forget. So thanks, Laura, I hope that helps with your cropping dilemma. Remember, if you guys have your own photo question, go to askdavidbergman.com. As far as this video, if you liked it, use the little, hit the little like button, the little thumbs up. That's always appreciated. You can leave a comment down below and I'll try to respond to those. I have a new episode of this show right here on Adorama TV every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, that comes out. So I hope you'll join me. I'll see you back here next week, next Monday, for a new episode of Ask David Bergman.